nothing else can be. You like jazz? Representing myself. Oh, why did he do it like that? Representing. Hey, don't look at me like that. Stop. So. To give you guys a quick little recap, this is Rodney O'Neill representing himself in court. He was recently sentenced for the murder of his girlfriend and his daughter. He also stabbed his son in the chest and his son testified against him and he cross-examined his own son. It is actually incredibly disturbing. I'm not gonna be watching that part, but we are gonna watch the opening statements because what does an angry man that kills two people look like when he's representing himself? Let's, let's just dive in, okay. Evidence is going to show that we are under some of the most vicious, fabricating, fictitious government you ever seen. This is really truly the pinnacle of Florida man. My son did not see me murder his mom. Yes, he did, and you stabbed him. The evidence is going to show he did not see me shoot his mom. Remember, the son is the key witness. The child was stabbed directly while looking at his father while he watched his sister die. In, in the testimony, he said that they watched, oh, this is hard. He watched his dad turn around and stab his sister and she just started like crying hysterically. I mean, can you imagine the confusion, the betrayal, you don't understand? Like your dad is always like this. He's always yelling, he's always angry. The victim's um, family later on said like, they were not surprised. Their demeanor was, this guy's been like this this whole time. He's been crazy. He's just been a crazy guy and this is, this is it. I called 911 without even knowing she called 911. During her call. But the evidence is going to show that your representative and law enforcement, local law enforcement, wanted to make it seem like I'm some kind of menace to society. And I ran after killing Kiara Barron knowing that authority was on the way to kill my own children. I wonder why I would do something like that mm. for no reason. And I'm standing here competent as can be representing myself. Oh, why did he do it like that? Representing, what, what this is not a music video. Rodney, hello? Hey, don't look at me like that, stop. Thank you, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> When people are try when people want to lie and say something never happened, I never did that, da 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 da, da and then suddenly you pull out an audio recording, nine times out of ten, um, no, eleven times out of ten, their response is going to be the audio was tampered with, the audio was tampered with, because that's all they have. It's like, bitch, we caught you in 4K saying what you said. Come on, you know. And then what's crazy to me is sometimes people buy that. They really do. But when somebody gets to the audio is doctored, that's how you know they're on their last leg. And so you hear it eight or nine times, and you hear me calling Kenyatta Baron a bitch and a ho. Yep. What you gonna say about that? What's your excuse? The evidence is going show he just mentioned a call where you're gonna hear him calling his ex-girlfriend a bitch and a, a i think that says a lot about what kind of person he is how he treated this woman what he thought of her and then he's like you're gonna hear this audio yeah we're gonna hear what do you have to but the evidence is gonna can you imagine being in a relationship with this man and having like a minor dispute? You can't say anything. That I called my dad after calling 911. But that call is all of a sudden missing from the T-Mobile record that we have acquired from T-Mobile. He did not. The 911 call that I made 911 and the 
911 call that you just heard cannot be proven that it was made because after I called for an investigation of those 911 calls, all of a sudden they become missing from all evidence. Okay, so I think that he's watched something or done some kind of research because this is an actual criminal defense like that that is that's a thing so he's saying that the prosecution said that he called his father after the murders maybe his father is actually a witness on the stand that he's gonna say what he heard in the call something like that who knows but rodney apparently that's a huge piece of evidence rodney's coming in and saying i called t-mobile myself and the evidence, I don't have to do all that, but y'all already know. He's saying that that call doesn't exist. And like, when you just drop, like that is something that attorneys actually do. So I'm kind of like, wait, where did you hear that? Like, how did you know? I mean, maybe he's just a professional gaslighter. I don't know. The evidence is going to show. I look alone. The evidence is going to show. I love my children. He really did write his little notes. He, I'm, I, he really, okay, I can't believe he prepped for the case. I just. That they say, I said, come out here, son, and help me kill this bitch. Wait, you can't, that's contempt. But my neighbor, Khalil Brown. What? Nor my neighbor, Mona Lisa Brown Gray. Look at her face. In fact, the evidence is going to show that Khalil Brown heard me say she killed me twice and then nothing else. All so right, let's see let's see how he wraps up his uh opening statements. I would love to do a little bit of a dive on um cases where people have represented themselves because I wonder if anyone's ever represented themselves in a murder case and actually got no there's no way. There's no way. Who put those excessive lacerations on Kenyatta Baron's face? Y you, 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 you did, you, you did it. All right, let's take a look at the sentencing here. I am not sorry for something I didn't do and I am not sorry for the things I did do. What the f Mr. O'Neill, right. listen, stop right, stop, right. listen to me. I'm not, I'm You're not. You're not gonna raise your voice again. I'm You're not, not gonna, gonna raise my voice, voice again. again. I'm not. I will have you removed from this courtroom. I consented to you without you being present. Yes, ma'am. You don't conduct yourself. I understand, yourself. young. Thank you. 19 years I've been at this job. I've seen human beings killed at the hands of others in every way imaginable. You name it, I've seen it. Shooting, stabbings, drownings, suffocates, blown apart by uh, cars and DUI manslaughter cases. Give it to us, Gaga. This is the worst case I have ever seen. I believe that. I know I will be. For the rest of my life, I'll be haunted by what I saw as far as the evidence and just the abject cruelty of So the evidence did show something, but it was not in his favor. And all I can think about, because I know I knew that Miss Barron was not with you romantically at the time. And I knew that she just out of the goodness of her heart. And it is beyond tragic that that critical decision ended in so much horror for her and for her children. It is unspeakably cruel what happened as a result of that one decision. The way that Ms. Barron died was horrific. Yep. And that 911 call, which captured truly all of it. Mm. I the beating is on the 911 call. My stomach, dude. heard a death scream. If anybody ever wants to know what it sounds like before a human being dies, knowing that their death is imminent, that's exactly what it is. That was a death scream oh my mm -hmm. god we're gonna see if it's true but 
You, you already. Rodney. What the f <laughs> We going to see if it's true. You already did your whole presentation. They let you. You traumatized your son even further. And you're still here in red jumpsuit. Bitch. They ain't going to see shit. To little Ranivia and to little Ronnie. But I'm going to focus on Ranivia. Mm. Because she was special. And you can tell Miss Barron had done everything she could to create a beautiful home for her family. Uh -huh. mm. I noticed that the um, Ranivia's bedroom oh my God. set it on fire. Dude, she is digging you into him. She tried so hard to make her feel like a princess. Mm. She did, Kenyatta did everything she could. Really quick, for you guys that aren't super familiar with like the, the court stuff that we do here, the reason the judge is talking so much is because throughout the entire trial, the judge says absolutely nothing. They just say like, you know, overruled, da, 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 da. They just make little things here and there. So at the very end, after the verdict is given, a few weeks later, the sentencing happens. And this is where the judge gets to really think over everything they heard. And they usually give a pretty long monologue. It could be anywhere from five minutes. It could be anywhere from 30 minutes. But it's the judge finally saying everything that they heard during the case because this person heard every single thing. So that's what we're getting here. She already had a life where she was born with challenges mm. regarding her physical and her mental disabilities. Mm. But the pain and suffering that I she- I forgot the daughter, the daughter was disabled. Oh my God. She had no idea. Like she did not understand what was happening to her, why it hurt so badly and why her father was standing in front of her. And that is fucking heartbreaking to me. She suffered that night at your hands. Mm. Unspeakable, absolutely unspeakable. Mm. And at the moment, that first time you struck her with that hatchet. A hatchet. A hatchet. All he could see was tears coming out of his sister's face. Mm -hmm. At that moment, that child knew. She knew she was being betrayed in the cruelest, most tragic and sorrowful way that a child could ever be betrayed. She was being betrayed by her parent, the one person that should be there to protect their children. I'm gonna cry lately. I'm PMSing them. Mm. And that was the last thing that child felt before she passed on from this earth was your utter cruel betrayal to her. Get him, sis. I read somewhere, and I don't know if it's true or not, I have no idea, but I read somewhere that souls pick their lives and that they know exactly how difficult their lives are gonna be before they enter into this world. Wow. And I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, Ranivia O'Neill is one of the bravest souls I have ever come across. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. No, uh, I'm one not. The bravest ever. I'm not. Ever. I'm not. Because she suffered so traumatically. Oh my God, dude. Hello? Are you kidding me? Okay, I maybe I maybe I almost did get a little a little a little something there. Um, dude. What the f there will be updates on this guy because this guy is going to do something crazy in jail 100%